First and foremost, Rabbi Yosef Yafi. First and foremost, Rabbi Yosef Yafi for the great work that he has been doing. And for Torah any time, for Kavar Shkach HaPratis, for Kala Loshan, for the Rabbeinu Shalelam. My beloved father in Shemayim, it is a pleasure to serve you, Hashem. And now we're going to talk a little bit. Somebody comes over to me telling me about the Tzadis and Eretz Yisrael. Tzadis and Eretz Yisrael. Oh, he was Tzitzel Dalton. The Tzadis, I, I don't know exactly what's going on, but say whatever it is. The Tzadis and Eretz Yisrael. No. I was Zayin. Busvetzain, busvetzain. No, no. Let's talk about the tsarists in America first. Let's talk about Joe Biden. Joe Biden. When Joe Biden became president, all the, all the, everybody went, Shem Yerachem. Joe Biden president. I don't know what they're talking about. I have one president in Shemayim. I won Rabbeinu Shalom. I, I voted for Hashem. And Hashem got in, as usual. Hashem took over. You know how much power it has when a person says such a thing. You know how much Kayach is sitting in that statement. There is cruises for sign. Just say, just say, I voted for Hashem. Say it. And Hashem is in. Full blast ahead. HaKadosh Baruch Hu has become the president of these United States of America. The 46, 47, 48, first, the second, the third, the fourth. He was always the president. Who's the president? He knows what he's doing. All presidents go to the toilet. All presidents visit toilets frequently. All presidents, all generals, all captains, all commodores, all majors, all uh, mayors, all governors, they all visit the toilet. And they all end up six feet under, and then they smell worse than all dead animals. Ad kan l'shein chayvis halvavis. The heilige chayvis halvavis, just a friendly reminder, don't get so... Who's this guy you're scared of? Who is he? Now every time you, you say these words of being fearless and not being afraid of a human being, just say it. You're growing. You're growing. That's why you came to this world, not to get fooled like everyone else. What did he say? What did he say? He said, oh, he said, and he, who did he? His say, his mouth. That's his mouth. Does he know how to make one tooth? Does he know how to make a pallet? Does he know how to make, make a, a, a esophagus, a, a, a trachea? He knows how to do that stuff? Never! Who's he? Whose mouth? Not his mouth. No matter who it is. A tzaddik mouth is not his, a rush's mouth is, it doesn't matter who you are. The cockroach and the human, Moisa Adam and Mahema Oyen. And people are so stressed for no reason, being afraid what people say and what they think and what they do. This person, he likes me, doesn't, they don't like me. Oh, we got Pinchas here. He wasn't able to. Well, it's, the Abish still will take care of everything. It's going to be great today, better than ever. We're going to have a great time. We're going to alone here with the Tatan Shemayim. We're going to have a talk about Amun and Betachen. Delicious. We're going to get a Lamaba for every second. For every word is a Malach. And the Ibish still likes it. This is the most Chashva Chabura in Gantz Lakewood. Here we talk directly about HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now in Israel, they're all worried stiff. What's going to be with us? This one and that one. I don't chop. Who, what's the word? What's the concern? The Ruchni is the Gashmi is what's the problem? They're not going to give money. The Medina Ha'aruda, the, uh, in the Medina, the Heilige Medina of Kaifrim, 
what they decided. Now they're working, they were better and they're worse, but or the, this gun, that one. Did, did they ever run Israel? Did they ever have a say? Did it make a difference what they said? They didn't like the Fruma. The Fruma are fur flourishing. The only people that are, that are true revu more than us are the Arabs. I think we have more, no? Yeah, flows from Jews. We got a million of them in Israel. The more they hate us, Kasha Yab, Yano Isaac, Kayyibaba, and Yifrites. The more they have, we're just like the frogs. The frogs, you kill one, boom, two pop up. But he's from Jews, they're all over there. They're thriving. They're, they're busy catching. Oh, how, how are we gonna manage? How, what's gonna be? What are we, it's Yana Mark's gonna give us money. That's the whole Torah. Maybe we'll get the money more, but they're covered. Not so, but then, uh, it's not so pleasant to, uh, not own kidding to need, uh, you need money. What do you want? They're going to give laws. They know how to make laws. Their laws are laws. They open their mouth that anything happened. They don't exist. Every one of them. They don't exist. Not one. The whole government is one. Abishta. What government? The building. Every brick is, belongs to the Abish, so what's the building? This one said, this, you said, you can't even pick up your head to talk. You can't even pick up a finger. You don't even know how to make one fingernail. You have a shaykhis, I don't care, but this guy's a powerful guy, powerful guy. What a powerful guy. The Tanyo was powerful. Where is he now? In the garbage can. Powerful. He, right? This, this. He was never powerful, he never will be, and nobody will be powerful except for Atat and Shemayim. And as I talk, I am bringing more Amunah and Betochen and God's Klai Yisrael. As I talk, I'm being mighty every single Jew. We're bringing more Amunah and Betochen, we're living with the truth. The Helek Avram Avinu, Azed Avram Avinu is busy smashing idols. Go smash them! In your mind, they're dead. They never existed in the first place. Think, who gave them money? Where'd they get money from? What? Listen, where'd they get their thoughts? How, how do you think? Do you have any control over your thoughts? Sharon, as Gavain Hagan Tzedos, he had a stroke. What happened to the grace of Sharon? He couldn't move. For how long? What? Yeah, forever. Can't move. What, to, <laughs> what happened to you? You're supposed to be the big Tanaka, the warrior. He was a tough man. Uh, where, what happened to Miss Tuffy? What happened to Rabin, Mitch Rabin, Mitch, this one, I don't want to say their names. I don't have a meaning not to say the names. I keep away from these names. This one, that one, the one that looks like this, the one that looks like that, the one that has this sheet, uh, that sheet, uh, the one that's very hostile and a little hostile, the one that was once nice and became a bum, the one that was once a bum and became this, and, ooh, they don't exist as one Amish, Hashem Yerachim. They never saying copy the good to also. They're not saying anybody. Nobody. Nobody except the Rebbeinu Shalalim. Nobody ain't him of Vadoi. We have a good man. We have a good man. He's going to take, what did the Esther Malka say? She decided to make a party together with Haman. So they shouldn't say, So they shouldn't be Samach on her. We got our sister, she'll be taking it. Esther, she'll do the job. She didn't like that garbage. That's why we have a Purim named after her. That's how she get her name, Megillus Esther, Kisvuni Lodatus, because she wasn't Gairus, all these silly, foolish things. With Esther, without Esther, but they just don't want those of the savage who work like this. The Viola Biden is in. The worst thing in the world. And the Viola, my Adam tells me, thanks to Biden, we got $14,000. All the from Jews are kvelling. Hi, right, Biden, we love you. Biden to Russia. $14,000. Every family got in America, they're riding out with, get the bums in. Get the worst people in because then you won't have a in them. And then the Abishta will make them do all different strange things. It's the Abishta. He gave all the from Jews money like galore. He's shelling out all these large families. Are 
Oh, Donk Biden. Biden was the guy that they were tittering. Biden shouldn't get in. Don't let her get in. Don't, <laughs> the violent. Did he do any bid? What bid did he do? What, what bid? The Abish is in charge of the whole United, these United States of America is being run by President Abishter. You need more than that. What do you need? Akel Yochan. Now look, every time you say that, you make it more and more a reality. I want every Jew to start talking like this. Boy, you'll see Mashiach will be here tomorrow. Every Jew must talk like that in Israel. They're so worried. I met this very, very chash of a year. He's here from Israel now. Tzadik, a green. Don't ask. He's a holy man. He says, I'm worried what's going on in Israel. I said, you serious? You worried? Are you serious? Where's the English stuff? Yeah, how can you be worried? It's ridiculous. How you, I was there during the Six Day War. We should have been flattened out overnight. The chances of us winning that war was, they had a plane during the Six Day War that was, it was running without gas, you know that? Without whatever you put in there. It was running out of bombing up all the Arabs. It was, how did that happen? Oh, you need gas? Who needs gas? Who needs, they had better this, they had better that, they would have won. They had for three sides. How'd they win? The Tsiyanim won. Anech digetog. The Abishta won. What Tsiyanim? What Tsiyanim? Well, who, the Abishta won the war it was, Shmuel Anavi, I miss Shmuel Anavi when there was no Malchus at all, even though from Malchus, when he was crying about Malchus, he gave three Muslim Shmuel and no Malchus, I don't like Malchus. It steers you away from the Abish, look what happens to you. He did it, he said, he got the money, he's the money, he's got money, who, he's got, Rebbe Mechabed Hashidim. <laughs> Rebbe Mechabed Hashidim. He has money. They have money, they don't have money, don't have money. In Lakewood, they wanted to make, there was a co-educational day school in Lakewood. It's all Hebrew day school. They could barely meet the budget, a million, whatever they needed. They, they couldn't deal with it. They came over to our barn. They said, you know, it's co-education, boys and girls. So our barn says, make, make separated. Separate it! We can't even manage the way it is. Now you gotta separate it. You're gonna to have to have double the money. You have to get a small classes. It's gonna crazy separate boys and girls. You know, Rabban said, "Lea kasev liazov, Lea kasev liazov." How did Lakewood get in? Rabban, they thought he was out. What? No college? Come on, <laughs> Rabbi. This is America. It's no good. Rabban said, "Tate el shmo." You know, Rabban once did. He was once in the hospital or whatever, and people kept flocking towards him. And the rab and, and the doctor asked, "What's? How come they get so excited over this man?" So Rabbi says, "What does this doctor want to know?" He says, "How come, you know, they make such a fuss over you?" You know. So Rabbi said, "Zok them tadel is just the kach for tadel is shmo." Think, think Rabbi, think he, <laughs> the the doctor knew what he was talking about. I think Rabbi cared. Zuck the pain in the shma. Zuck the pain in the shma. Rabbi faffed them on. The Satma faffed that the two, two biggest Torah builders, the iron and the Satma. They faffed the world. You know, they, in America, you were afraid to wear a halba beard. You didn't wear a mustache because it would look strange already. In comes the Satma. Longish. Pais kitzara, bucharim. A nice gekras, hold the pais, hold the floor. Faff them on. We're holy Jews. That's the way we go. Any problems? And I once read Reform. Reform had um, Reform had how many um, The Reform was running the world when I was a kid. <laughs> and in walked Satma. And Satma they had eight boys and eight girls. That's how Satma started. That was the whole most most, most of Satma. Within 30 years, whatever, there are more Satma Hasidim between Monroe, Monroe, Williamsburg, and Borough Park. Muncie, I'm not sure. Three, three more Satma Hasidim than the entire reform movement in the entire country. All right? Where's reform? Big shot. Reform. Not with a penny. Was that in the Satma Hasidim are going strong. 
and they're learning and they're keeping Torah mitzvahs. They're holy Jews, our beloved Satma Hasidim, and our beloved Lakewood people. <laughs> Let's not forget us guys. What are you talking? We're thriving away, but but you, you must go to work. You you have to go to college. You have to go. If a bacha goes to college these days, he ain't getting a shit so easily. The girl's gonna ask, uh, everything okay with him? Now, look what's going on. Girls, aren't you practical? I made it. See, the men are a little, you know, they're out of it. A girl, a woman is praktisch. She has to have in kemach and teira. She's gotta be, someone's gotta have his head on straight. The girls, if he's not a long-term learner, she don't wanna hit. Thousands, the whole world's full of these girls. That's all they want to marry. And they learn. They mean business. And it's going to work. And the Zay that never worked a day in his life, and neither did the father, and neither did, <laughs> goes on the day to day. They live happily ever after. All they do is learn. And, and it's great. Now look, I'm not making fun of working people. I'm a working person myself. I, I'm a Malama. I don't learn. I mean, I learn a little bit, you know. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. I was once in a big city. With the hut in Eretz where everybody, I'm not making, please don't take me serious, but it's a very poor area in Eretz Yisrael. And packed with Taira until Shemayim. Everybody learns. Thousands, we learn day and night. Masmidim, Gedalim, all of them. And one person never schlepping around. I asked him, who's that? He's a guy, he's, he's struggling in Parnosa. He works. Yeah, he don't, he doesn't learn. He was the only guy who looked like he was Nebuch. <laughs> he's never working. <laughs> so he can't make, he's all day, how am I getting my next bill? And he's, you know, he's the only nervous guy in the whole place. The guys are learning, yeah, Malila, they don't have it easy. I don't want to say this place is notoriously poor, you know? It doesn't matter. They go on and on. The years go by. They marry up the kids. They marry into each other. They have eight o'clock and a lot of large families. It's, uh, this guy, th- that guy's having trouble. <laughs> that guy was driving around all day. Everyone's a base manager sitting and learning and he's driving around. I can't, I can't manage. W- wait, what are we going to do next? See, there's a guy, find a guy, sweet guy. He had a life was known. He has trouble with, oh, he's the only guy with problems. I'm not making chas v'shalom. Going to work is a mitzvah. I go to work. But just in case you're not working, don't feel so bad. <laughs> don't feel so bad. You know, so no one's working and the world goes on. You need money, but how are you going to manage? Now, how are you going to manage without this yadim? How are you going to manage? It's better without them, believe me. As soon as they're out of the picture, the, you're going to see the gold coming down from Shemayim. They have a, they're out of the picture. It's, we're not simch on them. Till now, Achais, we had this good guy. He's good to you. the funds the yeshiva guys will get from him. But this guy on our side, there's one rebbeide shalom. Doing tshuva don't hurt. I don't know what tshuva. That's my own personal opinion. What tshuva? Who? Come on. I'm sorry. I want to say I want the Abishters here. Here's what I'm saying. Kupdarain. Nobody said, come in, Jack is here. You may come, you may enter. Jack is waiting patiently to hear, see all these sweetest guys on Lakewood come to my place, Rabbi say. Anyway. Uh, do you have a picture of me holding Jack? You have that? Make sure. It's good. It's good for business. How do I look? A little higher? But Jack! Jack! You shouldn't think I uh, lost my... You know, I'm still a Jack Samich. I, me and Jack get along. Anyway, so, so, uh, the whole, the whole world is living off the Rabbeinu Shalalim. Kailalites are everywhere in Australia, wherever you're gonna go. They learn, they learn, they learn, chasid them, let everybody tell you that. And look, they're not starving. So now you're afraid what's gonna be in Israel, and they're gonna, Bring us to the army. No one's going to no army. We're going to sit and learn. Them guys are right here. No army, shmarmy, pommies. Stutzen, the Abishta is going to help us. And we're going to stay and learn more than ever. And we're going to have bigger yeshivas and better yeshivas. 
And we're going to stagger learn the only thing, my only order is, uh, I would like to, um, what? You're adding a thousand years of light? There you go. There you go. This gentleman here. A bracha. Buha. A thousand years of light are being added to the list to learn Torah. Okay? That's, so far, that's what's going on. You want to know what's going on in Israel? Another thousand years of light to his, he's one of the, he's in, involved with Rebbe uh, uh, Sarutkin. Tired of eat. Ah. And he's a sweet, a sweetest, uh, he raises money for him. Oh, so that's the, another thousand years of light. This is no, so far, everything's great. Don't tell me about Israel. What are we going to do? We just got another thousand years of light. What are we going to do? We're, we're multiplying. You're scared of them. The Arabs, they can eat us up in one day. We're, how come nothing's happening? Well, how come? We're sitting there for years and years. We're surrounded by Jordan, Syria, hostile Iran and Iraq. When this guy, that guy, <laughs> Libya used to be a big threat. Libya with Egypt. With <laughs> we have one Rabbeinu Shalom who takes such good care of us. We're going to start worrying. People worry because it's fun. Open that Tysvis and forget the whole matzav. One Tysvis will wipe out all your problems. Chaim Kanevsky was out of bris. He was a come inside, chashava. Even we have there, Rechaim Kanevsky was a, was a Sandik in Kiyad Sefer. He looks out the window, he sees a, he sees a fence. And he says, what's going on here? You got a fence for the Arabs, you know. You need a fence? He was, they said he was Mamish Oismech. I heard this from, from a Ba Samcha. It's a true story. Rechaim went berserk. You need a fence from the Arabs? This is Kiryat Sefer. You're surrounded with thousands of blood to Gemara. How can you be scared? What are you scared of? So he said, no, 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 it's the Adif there. Oh, oh. <laughs> the Adif. Quiet him down. Well, what's us the man who's afraid? You're afraid of a Tiyani? A Tiyani, he has, he has, well, he looks like he's smart. Shin Bet, what are they called? This guy is from Mossad. He's from Boom. He's from this. He's tough. He's smart. He already knows what he's doing. I'll take the biggest Yeshiva Shiyukal over him any day. I'll take a Yeshiva guy who can barely, who's the most introverted guy who can't open his mouth a million times he, worth more than all the Mossad agents and the IDF and ID Shmevoir, a guy who opens up his Gemara and can barely figure it out. By me, he's way more powerful than all those guys. Wow, are they going to hurt you? And Afghamina, who's there, look what Biden's doing for us so far, making us rich. He's feeding the Orthodox communities. He's the big hero. They love him. Biden <laughs> says, my daughter says, ah, Biden, he's the hero. Most the Abish says in child, we're afraid. What's the There's nothing to fear but fear itself. Don't be afraid of anything. Just uh, Abish to be afraid of. Get ready for Elo. Ah, Yishmak. Here is Hashem. Toisif Yom. Zakra Beni Eirem. Nelson used to quote it. Being afraid is not a healthy thing, but afraid of Hashem is very healthy. Get ready. Braisha Shana. Yikasevon. Oviyayim tzayim kipomor yechazem abavayimom. How sweet it is. Rosh Hashanah Domini. What's sweeter than being afraid of Hashem? Rosh Hashanah Nevada. Rosh Hashanah Nevada. We have a minion, Rabbi Yisai. And our minion. Ah. What we do there, we turn over the world. Hey, look at Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur coming up, Yom Adin, stand before the Melech, Malchim, Malchim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What could be better with the Amish, the one you're afraid of him, and afraid of this one, and afraid of that one, and what's he going to say, and this guy said, you don't know if you're coming or going. Babala, look what happened to Sharon. Astrok, Oy Sharon. Oy Sharon, Sharon was a little bulldozer. What did he say? What did his other guy beg? Uh, his other guy said about him. He doesn't want him in the cabinet. He said, I, I don't want tanks coming into my office. Because he was such a, uh, uh. what did the other guy said, you know? He was himself against find a tough guy. 
So, but I don't want no tanks in my office. These were tough guy, the tough guy. What's tough guy? You know, it was tough, a yeshiva guy that could barely open his mouth and it sits and learns. He's tough. Hey, you got to, he, he opens a Gemara. Before he opens his mouth, he already said goodbye to the whole issue. The more I, the more you say this, the more it becomes more and more real. Don't be afraid of nobody. And remember the Yom Kippur War. Not the Yom Kippur War. <laughs> that, then there was a lady in charge. That was the problem. Lady, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. <laughs> the lady, you know, it says a melody shit. Double problem. She was a Tiani, you know what she was, and then she was a woman too yet. And the Ramam says, no good. You're not supposed to be a, a top, you know. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, but I'm talking about the, the Gulf War. The Gulf War, they had Batachan. All the, every Rosh Hashiva, everybody, they wrote letters, I read them. We're laughing. They had guns, that's gun missiles pointing at them with, a Soviet chemical warfare, Hashem Yerachim, what Saddam Hussein was ready to do. He was a tyrant, he killed 100,000 Kurds. There's pictures in the papers of Kurds. You know what, you know the chemical warfare, it makes this pink, there's this violet colored foam coming out of his mouth. Ugh, a horrible death, he wanted to send that to Israel. He's gonna kill, he, he held himself a Gilgal of the Bukh Russia. And Nebuchadnezzar, when he was a kid, his life's dream was to destroy Jerusalem. And he, sure enough, Saddam Hussein had the same dream. He did fit the bill. If you look through all the Chazals and you compare his, he, he fit the bill. I'm Chayshid, there he was right. Nebuchadnezzar's Gilgal. So he was, he was, he was going to destroy Israel. What happened? And, 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 do, and, and he, then he attacked Kuwait and he hung people in the streets. And then he, he terrorized, then he spilled the oil, the oil, crude oil, black crude oil, into the Persian Gulf. And they contaminated the whole Gulf. That was the end of him, by the way. Because the liberals couldn't handle that. They saw a duck coming out of the Persian Gulf, a black, with black wings. And they said, no, now we gotta go to war. Like the liberals hate war. You're not gonna go to war. You know, now so let them kill everybody, but you can't go to war. But as soon as that happens, they say, oh, that's different. So he, he blew it. But I show, he wanted to show a tough man. You know, they try to, these Arab leaders, I'm tough. See what I did? I spilled all the oil wells, the Kuwaiti oil wells. He put them on fire. And then he spilled it into the Persian Gulf. And, all right, now you know who's boss around here. As soon as he did that, all these Democrat liberals went berserk. You know, Bush, was trying to make a war. Bush was a Republican. He had a little say so Go to war. He's, well, why do you want to go to war? Because there's money. You know, he, he, he attacked Kuwait. Kuwait is oil rich. And America doesn't want Iraq to have all the, all the money with the oil. So he said, we must free Kuwait. <laughs> we must free Kuwait. So he got the whole world with him, a coalition. He made England, France, Italy, Saudi Arabia, we even got the Arabs with us. And we're going to war. Israel, don't do nothing. When he said, Israel, don't do nothing, it was Bashalach. And we had just Hashem, Yilachem, Lachem, Atem, Dacharishon. It fit in like, it was unbelievable. They're watching the Pashas, and the Yidden was so not scared. They say 100,000, I don't know if it's true, took a walk to the castle. And they davened. And after, when that happened, they knew we won. And they were talking with Betachem, Betachem, everybody was Betachem. Every Rosh Hashiva wrote a whole shtickle, they made gematriyos. This means Saddam Hussein is into the garbage, that means they're all in the, they're also baloney. They, they wrote shmaka, catchy things. All the Rosh Hashivas and all the Rabbanim, everybody made a joke out of it. And Rabbi Chaim Kenevsky, this, what are you going to do with the gas masks? Because you had to wear a gas mask, Shem Yerachim. If you ever got a, if he dropped gas on us, they had to take, I was told, nine different injections, and then you, <laughs> it's all chasana, the halabai, the guy should come out one piece from getting, if uh, some of that gears, mustard gears, what is it called? The, the kind of gears they were dropping there. You know what? It's illegal. He was, he was sending chemical warfare. He killed 100,000 Kurds with his 
his own people. At Israel, he was challenging to do that to us. And the violation never happened, nothing. He sent 39 scouts. He didn't kill one, one person. He killed the Machal Shabbos of Fahazia. That was the only person he killed. There were pictures all over the newspapers with a house fell in. The guy had just walked out. One after another. Another house fell in. He just went into the other room. This, it just went, just went. Nobody got killed. And by the way, in B'nai Brak, nobody, even the houses didn't get killed. B'nai Brak wasn't touched. Iratayda. You know, got messed up a little bit. Tel Aviv with Ramat Gan. They're right next door to B'nai Brak. So they shot all over the place. They didn't even get, but even them, he smashed the house. There was a picture. I showed him a, a head sticking out from the ground. Just a head. And he's under rubble. And right underneath, the guy came out without a scratch. They undid the stuff. One after another. This happened every day. Nisim, 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 Nisim. Why? Because uh, the Israeli pilots were sitting in their, their aggress- greatest pilots. They're sitting in their phantom jets, ready to go flying over Iraq and to drop bombs. And, and America says, Israel, keep out. Because America's pride. They were, we're the fighters around here. So you guys will get captured and you'll get you know, they captured some soldiers. Not one Israeli. The other whole day, an English guy got captured. He was in all the newspapers. He was crying. He was going with sugar. Because the Iraq guy went to work, did our dirty work. And the Israeli pilots stayed in the planes and never took off. Just go home. David's just taking care of us. He and 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 what did he say to Chaim Kanevsky about the um, the Gezmes, save it for Purim. And the war was over on Purim. Shushan Purim, remember? It was Mama Shushan, it was over just like Chaim Kedemski said. There was just a day, there were pictures. I was chick, well, I will take credit for that victory. There's no suffix, it was my fillers. That's without a question. I mean, I, in fact, I had Daven Dat I don't want one person getting killed. It's, it's kidding me. Nobody got killed. That was me. If anybody wants to know, I didn't want to tell the whole world, but now I'm being Megala myself. By the way, I found that there was a senior Shireb in Los Angeles, I think, who had Davin while I was even saying the same thing. So, if I ever met him, I would say, you were the one who saved the whole. But when he's not looking, I would say, I know the truth. It was me. <laughs> Every person has to feel like he's the, he's the special person around here. So they just don't want people to feel special. Anyway, who's scared? What's the matter? I feel they should get, the only thing I would propose, being the Baal Musa doesn't possibly mean to speak, everyone should get together and learn Shah Betachen as mandatory. All yeshivas, close up everything. One half hour Shah Betachen. Men, women, children. Just do that. Watch. If you do that, you're afraid of money. They'll become filthy rich. Shabbat Dr. Rebbe said Shabbat is a school for Panasa. I had this Biana Chassid, a friend of mine. He came into Lakewood. He helped him out a little. I gave him Batachin, go, land Shabbat five, ten minutes a day. A year and a half later, I'm on the phone with him. No. He said, for that year and a half, I got money from who knows where. Learn 10, 5, 10 minutes a day with a Gabrusa. Money came flying all over. You learn a half hour a day. You want money? Get a Shabbat Tachem. You'll be filthy rich. Start talking about the Abish. Don't say the The words are poison. How are we going to manage? Don't do that. What's going to be? Don't say that poisonous words. Everything. Better a positive lie. A positive lie means you're exercising betachem. Keep saying we're winning. Don't worry. Say it. Everything is fine. The Hebishter will take good care of here and there. Watch. Tyra. See, I was right right away. A thousand more people learning Tyra. Tyra's going to quadruple. No army mishigas. No more of that stuff. I'm about to leave there. No more of that stuff. And they're going to steiger learning. Not only that. All the fry are going to become from. And all these Meshigayim up there in the Knesset are going to suddenly one day say, you know, I don't like this whole business. 
אני חושב שעדיף להיות חרדי, you know what that means? You know Hebrew? עדיף להיות חרדי, it's better to be from, yeah, I think I'm changing my mind, I'm geyser, they're all going to have a gzeris hashmah, they're going to shmah them the other way, they're going to be a megayer, all these siyayinab, they'll straighten out, they didn't mean it, they're going to ask a mechila watch, they'll look what happened to the kids, the kids are all off the dark. All we came from the Tanya, whose kids are from? Am I right or wrong? All these big shots, the kids are off the darach. They put on yarmulkes, they say, Bye bye, Tati. Ani, Ani, Tati. I decided to be Chari. You know how many of them are Nebuch? They Nebuch have aggravation from the kids. So many Tiyanim, the kids are Nebuch becoming from. I have such aggravation. Nebuch, the kids are becoming from. That's what's going to happen. You wait. You know if Shlema Baba's father was reformed? And he once said, I'm a liberal type. I'm an understanding type. Even though my son learns in yeshiva, I tolerate it. He was a tolerant, tolerant reform guy. He was tolerant that his son, Shleim of Alba! Look what, look what we got, we had from a reform. So watch that from the biggest year and watch all the kids are coming to us. Mark, if it's a, Rabbi say, if something happens very soon, don't forget, it was the Rebbe's Nevoa. <laughs> it was Ms. Me. The Rebbe at Gizuk. They're all coming back, and they're all going to do tshuva. Look how the Arabs can't touch us. You Arab, why don't you do anything? Garnish. You know in America, you know how much anti-Semitism is sitting right here, two blocks away? You know how much hatred is going on in Yom Kippur War? There, there was a guy named, should I say his name? I'll say his name, Bob Grant. Bob Grant was a favorite. All the from Jews loved him. A Talena guy. By the way, these Italians, they never know how much Jewish blood they have. There was always a Shiloh where Yaakov Kamenetsky said, don't take Gaiden from the Italians because there's a lot of mixture during the Renaissance. They were, they were the best of the Goyim, so there's a lot of intermarriage shame, whatever. But what's on the game? But he said he was a guy. Jose officially he's a guy. If I be a Jew during the Yom Kippur War, all the colors, I be, if I be a Jew, I'd be hiding in the cellars. You Jews know how much they hate you. <coughs> There's a lawyer here in Lakewood. I won't say his name. <coughs> he had a nose job. He was a fryer guy. He looks Irish. He don't look Jewish. How did that happen? Because they, you know, he was a fryer guy. And they don't all look Jewish. And he went to college. And he looked real guyish. And he said, his roommates told him how they hate Jews. He said, you only know how much hatred's going on right here in these United States. You know, about 30% of the um, the United States guy. The the lion's share is English, then comes Irish, Scottish, that oil, and a lot, of, like 30% are Hessians, those are German stock. Now, Malikis are all over the place in America. You know the Kennedy Tzadikim? Oh, you ever heard of him? I'll show you my root in Joseph Kennedy, you know who Russia he was? You know what Roosevelt was? Russia, Marusha. Hitler and him were best friends. What are you talking? Well, the America's, uh, Chasushon. Lamaisa, we're thankful to these United States, and they're very good to us, and the Kaddish Baruch Hu gave us a country where we can learn Taylor day and night. But, you know, we're not going to get involved in that, so good. But either way, I'm going to tell you a story now. I just got a phone, I just, I, I visited somebody here in Lakewood. These are the eight o'clock of Friar people. I want you to know those Friar are coming back. I'm not going to say the name. You don't know how much Tyre is sitting inside those holy Friar Jews. I love them all. They don't mean bad. I'm saying, there's not one. They're all Tinnish and Ishbiz. Ishbiz, bring them back. Every one of them. And I want to be involved. I want to bring me and my boys. We want to be getting into care, by the way. Praise Hashem. I'm going to turn over the world, bring them all back to the Abishta. Now I'm going to tell you, you want to know sitting in them. This Zisa Heilige Yingala. Is he the most beautiful little boy? Is about me this? He one day started crying. A shiksa walked into his house. A pizza stick of shiksa made. I don't know what. And he started crying. Abishta, I don't want it in the house tomorrow. Abishta, please make it rain tomorrow. He doesn't want to be exposed. 
she should, and it rained the next day. Who is this kid? His bubby is the daughter of a super liberal Jew who sent her to a camp full of Schwarzes when she was a teenage girl. So she should mix. You know, you got to be broad-minded. This is the anacom. You know what's coming? You know what purity is sitting inside the non from Jews? If such a thing could happen. He's more pure than any. I never saw anything like it. The kid's crying. He doesn't want a pizza the woman to come into the house. He's Zeus. I know the kid. Zeus. Zeus. Purest meters. Halig and Shamala. Ah. That come, that's for us. Fry your stock. You know, we're going to bring them all back. They're all holy. We want them all back. They're all holy. They made a mistake with Mendelssohn. It's over. It's a new world. Bring them all back, Abishter. Abishter's on my, he's with me. Mila Hashem Eli. Bring them all back. Anyway, let's start. I'm going to tell you, on my set, the Anakul tells me about the Baba. The Baba's going through a hard time. There's har, the Baba's from, but the Zayda, Elta Zayda, yeah, hates from Jews with a passion. He hates, what are you doing that for? No, I disagree. The whole Sabbath and the whole Yom he hates it like with a passage. So they called up Mandel. What do you do? Mandel says, say nice things about him. He's terrorizing the family. He hates Yiddish guy. Say nice things about the guy. I just heard this. Two, two stories like this. So now the Anakul was calling the Zayda every single Friday. For eight months, he never answered the phone until they got a hold of Mandel. And Mandel said, say nice things about the guy. He's good. Call him a tzaddik. <laughs> Lie a little bit. Rashka Bahag, the guy's a bum. He's machal Shabbos. He hates Yiddish guy with a passion. Nah, he's a tzaddik gama. The kid told it to me himself. Rabbi Mandel, the day after I did that, the next day, he, the first time in eight months, I'm calling him every week. He never answers. After I said nice stuff about him, he answers the phone with a smile. Oh, how are you? Yes. Oh, I like those from Jews. They're great. Uh, oh, let's get together. Oh, I think I want to become from. I just heard this. Two, two such stories, exact identical. Right after they said nice stuff, you got a new person in front of you. Speak good about people. Bells of Rebbe's Shita. Anyway, that's one story. I'm going to tell you another story now. Rabbi say this story is going to blow you over. It happened 15 years ago in B'nai Brak. A B'nai Brak Rav comes over to me. Rabbi Mandel, what's the matter? I can't manage. Why, what's the matter? I can't. You, come, you want to see what's going on in my shul? He has this dingy little bottom floor place, and then she barely has a minion. And they, sometimes he has 20 guys, and he thinks Mashiach's coming. And the little I have here, they're against me. They're all turning against me. Nobody likes me. I'm not qualified. I'm not capable. I'm not. And I'm shy, you know, I'm not a good person. And lately, it got worse and worse. There's someone in there who hates me. And they're getting together and they're building another shul right across the street, a big, beautiful shul, to put me out of business. And not only that, they asked the Rav, and the Rav said they're allowed to do it. And they, all the neighbors are on their side. And the, the other day, another guy left me. And two days ago, another guy, I noticed he's called my own Gabai, is starting to act cold to me. And he gave me a whole chasana, a whole levaya rather, a whole tishabob. He gave me a whole tishabob. What's going on in his life? Oh, this one doesn't like me, that one doesn't. And I'm falling apart. And the shul, if you saw it, you'd see it is a little bit. It's almost as bad as my shul. The only thing is that he doesn't have, you don't have to pass the deep water test to get to his shul. My shul has drip, drip. So you, it, we stopped dripping already. We got, became more modern. Unfortunately, we fell in. Now, Rabbi Spawn, lately we're getting a little too fancy, a lot of lighting. Anyway, that's okay. So I told the guy, I told the guy, um, uh, so I says, 
Okay, I'm going to fix you up. They are the product of your thoughts. Whatever's going on, is, and every day there was more news. And you know what he did yesterday? And you know what they said? There's a whole meeting about me and how they want to destroy me and how they... And it gets more and more empty. Every day I walk into shul, are we getting a minion? I said, your thoughts, your thoughts are the cause of all your problems. That's what they said in the Vardy. Your lady, that's why the talking is so powerful. Your thoughts. I says, you come with me. I'll fix you, but good. And I started pumping him up. He is a tidy young man. He's a sweetie. He's a tamachacha mufli. Finish shas be'iyun. He's a ben tayre. He's a, and he's a shmaka person, a sweetie. He's a little quiet, a little this, a little thinks he's a little nothing. And my wife is having so much aggravation. And my children, they're all, what's going on with me? And, and I told I said, oh, you tell your wife. Well, that's very smart. <laughs> you tell your wife. You know, it was once a principal here in Lakewood. A great guy, a Cedar Shagrata, a very nice fellow. He once spoke here for the Malamdim and the Manayal, and all sat down. And he said, you know, he said how he keeps his wife out of the picture, and he has his problems, the Manayal have their... So, one of the guys sitting there was a Manayal. He says, what? You don't tell your wife? I tell my wife everything. Why don't you tell your wife? So he said, one Meshuggah in the house is enough. I don't need two. That's what he said. And I agree with that. I, I know my wife knows zero. My wife is the other way. When I come home, say things are going great, she says, "Uh oh, what's really happened?" You know, she knows me. My wife knows me. Anyway, that's the way I punch her. Don't tell your wife all the dirt. What are you doing to her? Leave her alone, will you? You have to talk about. It. He did this to me. But nothing. We had a chasen bad. Nothing. Bachfigs that Sal told us. Don't tell your wife how the other guy started up with you. It's a chazal. I think it's Tanud Elio. Because she's going to, she, uh-huh. She won't tell you, but what she's thinking, mm, the, I think the other guy's right. I know you, Taka. <laughs> you Taka like, uh, I think he knows what he's talking about. What are you doing? Don't tell her nothing. Keep out. It's a chazal. Don't tell your wife nothing. You know, Robert Miller once said, not to tell your wife any of your shortcomings or anything. No information for the enemy. <laughs> Ladies, please. I didn't mean it. Ladies, you're all good guys. I did not mean it. They're great ladies. But it's not good guy to tell your wife or your... Tell your friend. Get a chash of a yid. Tell him. What, what I do, I tell the Avish I don't tell my friends either. Nobody. I have problems. Whoa, what problems? I have Open the shop and talk and come on. You know, all your problems will disappear. Learn the Vardic Musa, you're looking for coverage. Anyway. So, I pumped this guy up, but good. And I let him have it. You are Gavaldi. They all love you. It's not true. You, you did you. You think this, you think that. Listen to this one. Dustin and Avidam. You know how many times it says in the Torah, Nitna Rosh and Rosh and Mitzrayman. You know how many times he said, you took us out of Mitzrayim and he had Lomas Bamidbar? It's all over the place. Only one time they said, you took us out of, of, of Mitzrayim, Eretz Zavas Cholavadvash. Did you hear that one? Mitzrayim suddenly became Eretz Zavas Cholavadvash. Does that make sense? By your own crew, they were going crazy. They were sitting in Auschwitz. Since when did Auschwitz become Eretz Zavas Cholud Vach? It's ridiculous. And it's just this last parsha with Kairach. That, who said it? Guess who said it? That was Dosan and Abiram. Ah. Oh, for them, it passes to talk like that. I have to be careful. People a little long time ago, they said that. They were the same ones that left over from the Mon, right? They, they don't trust, they don't trust. And Moshe is the leader to save them, pull them out of Mitzrayim. They tell on him to parry, because they don't even trust someone wants to save them. And no, no, it's not happening, yo. Know? And yes, no, and they love whatever they don't have. Whatever you're not getting anymore, Mitzrayim, 
That's Chal Zabas Chal Bash. What you do have is, is you got to kill him. Uh, Moshe is bad news. This is, whatever I have, the mon, don't, don't trust them. They're very like that. Well, like, well, many of us are a little bit like that. We have to go to war against that stuff. Anyway, I told this guy, you're, you're living in Dimya, and just like Chavl Vash, Mitzrayim is a Dimya, you know. You're, he's done, he loves you. He said it, he didn't mean it, he's your friend. And I helped him a lot. And slowly but surely, I brainwashed them. Oh, you're better than all those guys. And they respect you. You're a great speaker. I've heard you speak. I boom, 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 boom. It's only turned them into a halba jumbo elephant. And I said, oh, they love you. Right after I started brainwashing them in the other direction, suddenly someone pops up from nowhere and falls in love with him from nowhere. And he starts turning over the whole shoe. And right afterwards, he suddenly gets money and he builds a new place. It's beautiful. And, and I kept making fun of the other side. And they don't understand the chance. Everyone loves you. You're the good guy around here. I brainwashed him. And suddenly the whole picture turned around. They never built the shul. They were threatening to do it for months and months. They had money. They had people. They had all the influential guys. All the knackers were out to destroy him. And suddenly they all disappeared. And suddenly everyone likes him. And he's thriving. It's all in your head. What you think, that's what happens. I remember when it happened to me about 30 years ago. I was thinking to myself, you know, you're over the hill. And I walked out of my classroom, and a young man, one of our fellow uh, Rebbe, sees me, he says, you know, <laughs> you're over the hill. And I told myself, your thoughts are alive. You think? So does he think. I just had a phone call from somebody who's having a very hard time. He feels that his family doesn't like him. And he takes a look and he sees what, what his son wrote about him. I don't like my father. He just saw it. I says, what are you looking at your son's notes for? Your, your head is so full of fear that he doesn't like you. So your thoughts are making him do that. Now, go around all day and change your thoughts. All day long, they all love me. Just say it. I don't care what's happening. They all love me. I know a younger man. He had trouble with a teenager in his family. And this teenager was a rebel. Every Friday night at the Shabbos Titch, it was Tati and, and, and Getzel. And Getzel, oh, let Tati have it. And Tati did the best he could. And he, the Tati called up Mandel. And I, what does Mandel say? You go to sleep laughing. You go to sleep laughing. And the next day, Getzel was a different Getzel. You go to sleep laughing, Getzel's a new Getzel. Don't be garrus him. He's your best friend. Yeah, he's nervous. Doesn't mean nothing. I've been talking. It's going to change. Today, he has a large family, Kinahara. His biggest nachas is Getzel. The biggest Balder the one that used to challenge him all the time. Because there's so much hours of betachan, betachan on Getzel, that was chal on Getzel, that you can leave, Rabbi. So it's already, we've been here a long time. The Elam is invited to leave. I'm going to talk my head off for another five minutes, but I don't mind if you leave. Anyway. So, Rabbi Say, it's all in your mind. It's all in your mind, Rabbi Say. Think positive, happy thoughts. How much the still loves us and talk happy. Now, are you ready for this one? I take credit for everything going on in Israel. You believe me? Okay. Watch this. I used to follow the news. I had certain bedoram in my own world. I started working on different things. And whenever I worked on something, I worked a lot on Batachim, whatever it is. That week, there was a certain kufa where every week a bus exploded. The Arabs exploded a bus, and Nebuchadnezzar got hurt. So I decided, I'm going to put an end to this. And I, whatever I did, I did. Week after week, whenever I did my thing, nothing happened that week. And I was mamish on the case. This is a different kufa, where the Arabs are making trouble for the from Jews. And there were mamish... Not for from Jews, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the Israelis. And I, I've been talking to Abish to wipe them out. 
And the next day, boom, the Israelis did a job and the Arabs walked out like this. And one after another, all I did was dominate. Remote control. I'm sitting here in America. I'm running the whole show. I don't read the newspapers. Newspapers make it worse. That's Teva. I go straight to you, Hashem. Do a job. I have newspapers that messes you up. You start thinking in Teva, well, we, we're, they're stronger, you're stronger. Keep me out of that. I got the answer. But one thing bothered me. It bothered me that the Tiyanim kept winning because of my thrillers. I didn't like that they walked around like the Tiyanim, you know. I remember the, the week it happened. This is Abishta. This time I want you stepping in yourself. I don't want them winning. I want you to do the job. That week, in two cities, Shem and Janin, check out. I should have saved the Ated. They, the, they made human shields out of the women and children. They, the Arabs made their women and children put on explosives all around them. And they, they encircled the whole city of Shem and Janin, those two cities, I remember. And they stood there, human, so the Israelis dare start up with them. They're dead civilians! You killed civilians! All the newspapers, you see dead ladies, dead kids, everything. You're finished. So, so, uh, that week, the, so the Israelis, the Tiyanim, big shot. You can't do nothing now. That week, there was lightning. I believe it was the summer yet. Lightning came down on those two cities. On Shem and Janin. I said, hey, I want you to do it. I don't want Tiyanim doing it. And the Arabs got so confused, they're running for their lives. The Israelis wiped them out like a, it wasn't a Tiyanim, it was the Abish that did the job. Are you like that story? You think I'm, you think I'm, I'm nobody over here? You, now you know? Tiyanim know who you're talking to? Now you can do the same thing. You can do the same thing. Feel like I, there were three wars that I gathered in Ulam to say God still him. And I, I, I encourage everybody, don't be afraid of Gaiva. Please. It's you and you alone. Yachin Shasa Chuba, Moshlan Akal Ulam Kulay. When you, in the Vardy, Rav Geshen used to repeat that. It's almost Elo. A little Chuba, just every little bit. Let's try a few Gadarim. I just heard a story. It was very hard for me to swallow that one. An old Nevardiga, his name was Reb Nayak Feldman. His anical tells me, he was a Nevardiga. He learned common it, but he kept the Nevardiga. He says, his Zayda always made Gedurim. He always made Kabbalists. He remembers, this one was very hard for me to swallow. You'll soon see why. He made a Geda, he liked chocolate too much. No more chocolate for the rest of my life. For a Harry like me, that was very hard to swallow that one. <laughs> but anyway, but the Vardigas make it count, make Kabbalists. Anyway, Abizel Halpin, where are we up to? We're fine. No, we're doing good enough. Full hour. Pleasure having you go. Let's think Vachayim in Israel. Watch, watch. It's going to change the whole matzah. Watch, watch. Yosha just said, Chuba, we're all doing Chuba. And the main Chuba is more Betachem. Rav Yeshua said in Elo these days, he said it in front of 200 people. The main tshuva is bitachin. Have more bitachin. Stop being afraid of everything. Relax. Relax and don't get, don't get stressed. Don't get, what's back there? Come inside, sweeties. And they shall have, we have Yeshua's Gemores and Rochnis and Gashmis and everything's going to work out beautiful. I had a mypus. Tell my, tell my mypus. I just had a mypus on my side. I'm mypus and ridiculous. One after another. Whatever it is, somebody couldn't do it. You hear my bracha? Take it, take it. There you go. That was mypus. You see that? What a bomb mypus I am? By the way, I do want to tell you, Rabbi Sai, every Rebbe has to be a chassid of a different chassidus, you have to understand. You'll have a certain amount of time to learn. You gotta come to the tish. That takes a lot of time. You gotta praise the Rebbe. That's also a lot of time. Say, oh, we got the best Rebbe. In my chassidus, that part I take care of. I'll go around saying how great the Rebbe is. <laughs> I'll save you so much bitl tire. You don't have to, 
you will be able to learn double. I'll praise myself day and night. I'll take care of that.